Welcome back to another episode. We're Julius and Julius. As you guys can tell, we're right on the riverbank of an alpine secret river. And today we're going to show you how to fish the dry fly for trout. For those of you who are new to fly fishing, the main reason to fish with a dry fly is to imitate insects that have maybe fallen in the water or larvae that are hatching out of the water. And these fish are just hunting for the insects on the surface. Julius is just going to give us some basic information now. First and foremost, it's really important to know that only 10% of the trout's feeding is actually taking place on the surface. Mm. So that's a small time period where we can actually catch the trout, but when it's taking place, it's just awesome. And the main part about the dry fly fishing is that you imitate the, the right insect at the right time, in the right size and in the right color. That's really important. The big four groups are mayflies, stoneflies, caddisfly, and also the not from the water coming group of terrestrials like hoppers, ants and stuff like that. So basically these terrestrials are just bugs that are falling in the water? Yeah, absolutely. Last but real tiny group, the midge and mosquito group. Really small insects, but sometimes they're hatching millions of them. One, one mosquito is not much food for a trout, but they are collecting thousands a day and they're get, getting well fed. And sometimes you see a lot of rising fish, but you don't catch one. Sometimes it's a reason they're eating those small flies and you're fishing a big dry fly and they won't eat it. Yeah, so yeah. when they're targeting small mosquitoes, they may not go for a big mayfly? Yeah, absolutely not. And then you have to definitely have to, to choose a really small pattern in hook size 16 to 18, something like that. So what's the first step when you come to new water? Yeah, actually my first step is that I just go down to the water, just sit down and have a look if there's anything hatching. If you see flying insects all over the water, maybe some spinners that are mayflies that are dancing together in the sky, just check out the surrounding. Are there ants in the forest around the creek? Or maybe there are some um, grass with some hoppers in it, mm. stuff like that. That's the stuff you're searching for and you just need to have a look. And if you're not finding anything or you don't even know what insects are in your water, you just go to a rock or a small stone, just flip it around and have a look what insects are under this rock hiding there. Yeah. So the first step is to have a look what's actually there. Yeah, absolutely. We just spotted some insects, we know which fly we're gonna use now. After that, the main part in dry fly fishing is that you need to find some fish. Mainly it's side fishing for trout. And for that reason you have to go to a big pool that you think, yeah, this looks promising. After you got the right sunglasses and the right spot to, to, to find a trout, it's really important that you know how is the trout behavior in a river like that. And it really depends on the water temperature. If the water is really cold, the trout will hide somewhere under a rock or something like that in a deep pool. If it's cold, they don't want to waste their energy. They are just waiting for warmer weather and some hatching insects that they can eat something again. It needs to be over 5 degrees because otherwise it can't digest the, the, the food properly. They will just come out of those pools and they will start to hunt something because they need to eat something, especially after long winter. And for that reason they will just get in a nice position in the pool where they can see the pool, where they have the opportunity to collect some floating insects and stuff like that. And that's mm. the reason they need to, to, to stand in the main current, but that takes a lot of energy. The ideal water temperature is between 9 to 10 degrees, but it depends on what trout you're fishing for. It depends, brown trout it's a little bit colder, the rainbow trout likes higher temperatures as oh, well. Okay. Yeah. After we found some uh, rising fish in the river, it's really important to, to sneak up on them properly. Try to come as close as possible to the fish. And move really slow. Yeah, you need to move really slow. You have to think about, at first, before you sneak up on the fish, how you want to fish the, the, the trout. If you want to fish it from upstream or downstream. So what would you recommend? It's depending on what, what fly you're using. The caddis fly, if they hatch, they're just cruising around on the surface. To fish a caddis fly, it's, sometimes it's quite good to fish it downstream because you just throw it to the other bank and just work its way to the other side and you need to have a high floating dry fly it's doing some some movement on the surface and yeah. sometimes the trout get really 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 aggressive if you do a fishing style like that but most of the time the dead drift is the way to go to fish a dead drift 
where the fly is not dragging at all, okay. moving on the surface. Mm -hmm. It's just dead in the water like a marshmallow floating down the river. So very passive. Yeah, really passive. You need to fish it from downstream. And it's actually quite good to have a long leader, just cast it above the trout. The dry fly needs to land in front of the trout, exactly in the current where it's pushing all the insects in, this, in the side view of the trout. Mm -hmm. And so it, it actually can see the fly. And that's, that's perfect if you're fishing from downstream. Most of the time for dry fly fishing, we're using a five weight fly fishing setup. Yeah, because it's really a one proper all round setup. Yeah, it's very, weight. very versatile. We're using long leaders because we have gin clear water. We don't want to spook any fish. For that reason, I have a conical tippet that's actually about two and a half to three meters long. And after that, I have a little knot like here. And then we have one meter of uh, 0.18 millimeter monofilament leader material as well. So we have the total length about four meters, three and a half to four meters. And that's working quite well with not spooking any fish. And we don't use really thin leaders because they are massive fish in this river. And we don't want to lose any, no, any one of them. No, Absolutely not. We there. don't want to lose <laughs> them. For sure. <laughs> one last part I want to say is that I'm using a weight forward line. You need to have a long distance between you and the fish that you don't spook it. If you're not using a weight forward line, you might not make the distance to, to catch the fish. Mm, okay. So yeah, that's not, not the perfect line for dry fly fishing, I know that. But it works quite well for me in this Pacific River. So after um, talking about the rod setup we are using today and the line, I just want to give you a quick look in my dry fly box. I have uh, many different kinds of dry flies, nearly every color, but um, let's keep it simple. There are two to three really good working patterns that work in nearly every river. I fish them in Lapland. At first we have some Goddard Sedge style flies here. They are floating quite well in the water. They are really good for downstream fishing. You can just strip them in a little bit, make the trout aggressive. A new fly that I tied actually for my for this this winter for the first time is an Ismo Hupan style fly, not made from balsa wood. It's made from foam, but I think it's a cool pattern. I caught one really big trout on it. Then I got some different mayfly style patterns and in gray to yellow colors, everything. Then I have some uh, foam hoppers, but it's not hopper season. On the lower side of this box, um, you actually can see some other deer hair flies. It's a deer hair caddis and some bigger Goddard sedge stuff. Three different styles of Europea 12. It's um, a really good fly to use in any water conditions. Then I have a lot of different heckled flies, like the super pooper. And, and then I also have some really small heckled flies, like some black gnats, stuff like that, to imitate some midges, some small mosquitoes and stuff like that. And of course, one of my all-time favorites to catch a really sneaky big fish in summer is the black clinkhammer. It works perfectly if you have a fish that is really well educated, that don't want to take a big deer hair caddis because he just knows. If I would recommend a heckled dry fly for you, it would be the, the, the black clinkhammer. It's always working for me and I called on a small fly like this, hook size 18 to 20, I hooked most of my big fish with it. Wow. I think, yeah. <laughs> and it's actually the smallest fly I got in my box. And now we're just by the river and the fish is taking the fly. First of all, it's really important to have good sight on your fly to know where it's at. Then if you see a rising fish taking your fly, it's essential to give it a little bit of time for the fish to rise, take the fly and then when it's on its way back down, when the fly has positioned itself in the mouth, then you set the hook and then you should get the fish. Yes, yeah, some people actually just told me if the fish is taking the fly, they're just telling themselves, God save the queen. And that's the period of time the fish needs to take to go back down. It's a little bit funny, I don't know if, if some people are really doing that, but I think it sounds quite cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. A lot of times I'm just striking too fast because I'm nervous. Just take your time, be relaxed. You just see the fish rising, taking the fly, putting its head back down, and then it's the perfect time to set the hook. And then you, you won't lose any fish. When I fish a lot in summer, I nearly lose no fish on a dry fly. I lose a lot of them on nymph, on streamer as well, but not on a dry fly. While we're sitting here, 
I'm just looking in this direction and I see some nice mayfly spinners just dancing in the sky. That's really good, really good. We've been talking for ages now. Enough for the theory part. Let's get down to the water. We'll look for the insects. We're going to choose the right fly and then we're going to catch a fish. Yeah, we'll definitely catch one for you guys. Hopefully a big brown trout. Let's go. We'll see you at the river. So here we are, we made our way to the water. Yeah, finally. And now we're looking for some good pools. Yeah, today we're just gonna walk upstream, use your polarized glasses and you'll find a rising fish and we try to analyze what they're feeding on and what fly we're gonna use to catch them. We found a really promising pool right now. Yeah. You can see it in the background behind us. We've already spotted some active fish as well. Yeah, that's absolutely right. We just had a quick scouting, just walking up this little path behind us. Quite interesting because we have four different brown trout in this pool. One is really big, about 50 centimeters, maybe a little bit more. And the smallest trout is about 25 to 30 centimeters. Yeah. And now our plan is to catch the big trout, to get on this little sand and gravel bank and make a short cast because, like always, the biggest trout is on the main spot where the, most of the, the, the food is just coming by and it's really important that our fly is hitting the first trout, the biggest trout, at first because if we cast from behind we might catch the small trout and then this spot will be spooked all day long. As we told you it's really important to first have a look what insects are active and yeah. what you can find and we've seen quite a lot of insects, huh? Absolutely. Yeah, it was a big diversity of different insects we saw caddis, we saw mayflies, we saw stoneflies as well and like right in front of the lens there were some super small midges but that would be a hook size 26 or something like that so as we were talking to you it switched a little bit that we have a big amount of mayflies in the water now so guys we are at the neck of the pool and as you can tell here's a mayfly just sitting right on the rock this mayfly fly had the luck that it survived this big pool, not getting eaten by a trout. And now she's like hardening her wings. She's just sitting on this rock waiting that she can start to fly. So we are just taking the exact same pattern and I think that the chance is really high to catch a fish on that pattern. That's perfect. The amount is good and we have some steady rises from the fish to those mayflies. Here yeah, and for that reason I got my five weight rod and I tied on a long leader because of this really, really slow flowing pool and I tied on this little mayfly here. It is exactly like the, the patterns that are hatching right now. Dark gray, really dark body, some, some gray flies and of course some fibers at the tail. That should work because it's the perfect imitation. Yeah, I'm super confident in this, in this fly, 100%. So. Let's go, give it a try, then we'll see. Actually, I'm waiting for the bigger fish to rise again. He's just under this big rock over there. So now we just hope that we don't spook the fish and we might catch the bigger one. Dry fly is drifting perfectly in there. We just hooked up to the big fish, used the mayfly, monster fish, just bending my rod to the, actually to the limit. He wants to go behind his rock and I need to get him out of the current. Now I will just go into the pool. When he sees me, he will get quite aggressive, I think. If he gets under his rock, he will cut the line for sure. That's a big fish, guys. So guys, just have a look. This is a monster. Absolute monster fish. And there you see, right in the mouth, corner of the mouth. Had a really short cast in the current. The mayfly just floated around and he took it. The afterfin 
is just so red. I have never seen something on a brown trout like that, right where my right thumb is. And as you can tell from the dorsal fin, it's a perfect wild fish. You see the white spot. We never thought about catching that big fish for this video. And we're now gonna release this beauty. Oh, he is ready for takeoff. So if you've enjoyed this episode, if you've learned something about dry fly fishing, please subscribe to our channel and also make sure to follow us on Instagram. Yeah, absolutely. Check out Julius and Julius. I'll keep you updated. Stay tuned. See you in the next video. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.